The last thing I wanna do here is explain why simultaneity has to be relative in order for special relativity to work. To do that, let's start by taking a look at a diagonal matrix, and we'll see why this is important in time. So we have some matrix of the form M, 0, 0, 1 over M. And I'm setting this up so that these two will multiply to equal 1. Now if we think about what the transformation for this diagonal matrix looks like, we're going to have a plot like this, and then suppose we have the vector 1, 1 here. After we apply the matrix, all we have to do is say multiply 1 by m, and then multiply the second one by 1 over m. So our new vector is going to look like this, and it's going to have coordinates m, 1 over m. Now when this happens, let's look at what occurs on the other side if we have a vector negative 1, 1. If we apply the matrix, it's going to look exactly the same. We multiply the first component by m and the second component by 1 over m. So this is going to get sent to the vector over here, negative m, 1 over m. So this first vector, we see what happens is it kind of gets stretched and its direction gets pulled down towards the x-axis. And the same thing happens to the vector over here. It starts out at a 45 degree angle, now it's getting pulled down towards the x-axis. Now if we look at this diagonal matrix and we compute its eigenvalues, we ask when is m0, 0, 1 over m v equal to lambda v? It's pretty easy to see that the two eigenvectors are going to be v equals 1, 0, and 0, 1. And the eigenvalues are going to be m and 1 over m. Because if we take this matrix and multiply it by 1, 0, the result is m, 0. And similarly over here, we get 0, 1 over m. So we have these two eigenvectors, 1, 0, 0, 1 of our matrix. And we see that they're at a 90 degree angle to each other. 1, 0 is along the x-axis, 0, 1 is along the y-axis. Now we can write any one of these vectors as a linear combination of the eigenvectors. For example, negative 1, 1, this is equal to negative 1 times 1, 0, plus 1 times 0, 1. And when we apply the matrix, we can think about applying it separately to each of these vectors. Now, if we look at the vector 1, 1, 1, 1 is the same vector as negative 1, 1, except we flip it about this vertical axis, the axis of that second eigenvector, 0, 1. So we can write it as the exact same thing as negative 1, 1, except we flip the sign on this first vector. It has the opposite x component. So when we apply the matrix to each of these, it's going to be exactly the same. This transformed eigenvector is going to be exactly the same, 1 over m, both cases. And the x component will be the same except we flip it. So anything that happens to negative 1, 1, if it stretches down towards the x-axis, that means the x component's getting bigger, the y component's getting smaller. That has to happen on the other side too, just that the x value is now negative. So what exactly does this have to do with Lorentz transformations? Well, what I want to do is consider taking this entire diagram here and rotating it 45 degrees. The eigenvectors for this original matrix were 1, 0, straight horizontal, and 0, 1, straight vertical. Now when we rotate this whole thing 45 degrees, the eigenvectors are going to go along the 45 degree angle axes. So the eigenvectors will be 1, 1 over here, and negative 1, 1 over here. If we 45 degree rotate this way, the vector 1, 1 is going to get moved to 1, 0. And negative 1, 1 rotated will become vertical, so we get 0, 1. Now this entire situation is the same, except it's rotated. But remember, when we look at the Lorentz transformation, the speed of light is constant, which means that a world line that goes along 1, 1 it has to stay along 1, 1 because it has to stay going at the speed of light after we transform. Which means that 1, 1 is an eigenvector of the transformation. And similarly, negative 1, 1 
is also an eigenvector because it's the speed of light in the opposite direction. So our Lorentz transformation matrix up here, that's actually an example of this idea of a diagonal matrix, except the eigenvectors are rotated 45 degrees. And so all the work that we did over here is still going to apply. In particular, let's suppose we have this vector here, which is now vertical, and it gets stretched and pulled in this direction. What we saw earlier is that has to be symmetric about the axis of the eigenvector. So if we flip along this 45 degree line, we get over here to one zero, the same thing has to happen. They both get pulled down towards the eigenvector with the bigger eigenvalue. And so let's say we have some matrix where one one and negative one one are eigenvectors. If that matrix moves zero one over to the left, then it's gonna have to move one zero diagonally downward. Now let's think about this now as an XCT diagram, as a space-time diagram. Say we have some transformation between two inertial frames that takes something that was originally stationary and says now it's moving with some velocity in the negative direction. If that happens, then on the other side of the eigenvector, something that originally was simultaneous, that was just describing a movement in space and no change in time, that now has to get pulled down so that these events are at different times in the other reference frame. The only way for the two light rays to be eigenvectors is if we break simultaneity because it has to be symmetric about those axes in order for the matrix to work. So we know that when we're moving between reference frames, something that was originally just moving through time and not through space, then starts moving through space. In other words, stationary objects start moving. By symmetry, an object that was originally just moving through space and not through time, in other words, a bunch of simultaneous events, those have to now move through time. They're no longer simultaneous. And so the relativity of simultaneity is really just a symmetric idea to the fact that stationary objects start moving. In special relativity, in order to keep these light rays at the same speed, we see that space and time become symmetric with respect to these coordinate transformations. And that's why we observe the relativity of simultaneity.